So, good afternoon. My name is Luigi De Russis, and I am the, I can say, the second teacher of this course. You will meet the third one next week. And today and next Monday, we will cover for three hours a very brief introduction to Python, to the Python programming language. So basic feature, nothing extremely difficult. And I have two questions for you. The first question is, how many of you already know Python? Okay. So probably for you, this will be a little bit boring as a lecture, but uh, I'm sorry. Um, but for everybody else, it could be a good introduction. And the second question is, how many of you know nothing about programming? Nothing. Nothing at all? Okay. Good. No, not so good, but let's go over that. And, okay. And the third thing that I would say today before starting speaking about Python is that this year we will try to have, uh, so let me say in this way, these three hours are typically really, really boring for you and for me to explain basic feature of Python. And this, this year we would like to have a different approach, different from reading or more, little bit more reading the slides, but trying to do something directly in the programming environment. So try to apply Python directly in, in the code instead of seeing this. I, however, I will follow, so I will not follow the slides here, but I printed it so that I can cover all the topics in the same order that appear in the slides. So this is an experiment, this is first year that we try to, to adopt this method, and we will see if this works better or worse or is equal than uh, having uh, a discussion upon the slides. So, I would say, one hour and a half today and one hour and a half next Monday about Python with really basic information. So, starting from the basic information, Python first reappeared in 1991, so it's a quite a recent programming language. Was designed by this guy that's called Guido van Rossum, or something like that. Um, and he designed this programming language with three objectives in mind. The first one is that the programming language should be general purpose and high level, so suitable for a very large uh, different approach, different uh, applications. The second one is that um, Python should have an emphasis on code readability and consistency. So you, sh you see a Python language, you should immediately understand what the program does without a lot of other uh, details that are important but maybe not immediately needed while you are developing the the programming language, and this is the third thing, hmm? a programming language that is not only concise and readable, but that avoid to enter in all those details that are maybe useful for central application, but not in general for novice programmer. Python obviously has a website, and Python right now exists in two versions, Python 2 and Python 3, and we will use Python 3. I would like to emphasize this because they are different. Python 3 is not compatible completely with Python 2. So this is important also if you look on Google, look on the internet for uh, codes, example, and something like that. So, now, as I said before, let's start with programming. So I create a new project here that I will share with you uh, on uh, GitHub right after this, uh, this lecture. I will call it Python Basics. And I will put it full screen. Uh, 
and I would like to create a start.py, a file that I call it start.py, then I zoom a little bit so that everybody could see. So the first thing that we, we computer scientists, computer engineers typically do when starting explaining a new programming language is to write the Hello World program. That is a simple program, the minimum program you need to print on screen the sentence Hello World. The, the minimum amount of code that you need to do this operation. So just as a reference, in C, for those of you that already know C, this is the minimum program, the minimum Hello World program that you need to write, to print something, to print Hello World, this thing here on screen. So this is not important if you don't know C, but for people that know the C programming language, this is something that may generate bad or good memories, but this is the minimum bare program in C to allow you write on the screen Hello World. In Python, this is quite different. Different. So if you want to print uh, Hello World on screen, you just have to write print, open parenthesis, and Hello World. That's it. So if we, or if we run this, uh, and I increase the zoom here, you see that Python print on screen, hello world. That is our goal, our objective right now. So for those of you that already know some other programming language, what are the main, we can say, differences that you notice between this and uh, this line and similar lines in other programming language. No semicolon, right? So you don't need to terminate the line with a semicolon in Python, just start a new line. Yeah, no includes. With respect to C, no includes. Python has something similar. We can say that it is an import, but it's not needed for standard uh, operation like print. No main function. So it's a conversation <laughs> between me and you. No, no main function. Some, Python doesn't need a main function to start a program. You just start writing your code here. Python has something similar to a main function but it's not needed for run any program. It's needed in some specific, if you want to do some specific operation that we will see later on, probably not today. So here you have your first statement, your first instruction that is print hello world. And uh, uh, Python also has um, comments. Hmm? Comments in Python are written in this way. Simply one line comments. And if you want, Python also has multiple line comments. So this is the first line and this is another line and so on, that start with triple double quotes and ends with triple double quotes, or they can also start with three single quotes like this and end obviously with three single quote. They are equivalent. 
as a multi-line comment. OK. Python then has some keyword that are words that you cannot redefine in your program. You can use it if you are you know how to use it, but you can have uh, something, you cannot call something that you like uh, class. These are reserved word. So you cannot redefine any of them. And for people that already know how to program, you should notice something uh, uh, similar, known, like while, for example, or if here, or for here, and something else. Then, let me close also this. So, in Python, we can also say that this is, this one here, this hello world in double quotes, is a string. This is called a string. And you can create variables to host strings and other elements, like numbers, like Boolean values, and so on. So how do you create a variable in Python? That really, again, simple. You just name of the variable equal what you want to assign to this variable. So for example, we can create the variable uh, course and assign it to ambient intelligence. So I, I create a variable that is called course, and I put inside this variable, assigned to this variable, the ambient intelligence string. I can also create, if I want to have a name of the variable longer than this, composed of multiple words, I can say, write something like this name underscore course. So in Python, typically, variables name names multiple. When multiple names, words, are inside a variable, you have every single word separated by an underscore. As you see, you don't define, you don't specify a type. You don't say that name course is a string. In fact, you can, let me write this, you can also do something like this. For example, uh, or it's a very bad name. Okay. Or this. or this, you can reuse the same variable to host different type of content without specifying which content is inside the variable. So you have, in the first case, the variable value that hosts a string. In the second case, the value variable that hosts an integer number. In the third case, a floating point number. And in the fourth case, a Boolean value. That is true. So any variable can host any type of content. This is something uh, useful in some cases, because you don't need to remember if a variable was defined as an integer and then you receive a string, and you have to, to redefine the variable to cast the variable to another um, type, but you can reuse it. Conversely, you need to make, to, to care about which element, which type you put in a variable. Because if you're expecting a string and then you receive a number, certain operation like computing the length of a string cannot be performed because you cannot computer length of a number. 
strings in Python can also be written with a single quote, like this. And you can check it in any moment. So let's try to, to print this just to be sure. So I print value. What we expected to print on screen right now? The last one. So it prints hello world because it was before and true because it's the last one but it gives no error or anything else because, again, a variable in Python can host whatever type you prefer. You can check if you need, before using that variable, which type is computed by Python and is available here with the function type. Type of value, if we print, for example, type of value, and we run this, it all does that value is a Boolean. And if we run this with, uh, for, example, for example, a string, just, it all does that this variable is a string. So you see the same variable with different content, assume different, a different type. Computed in real time, we can say. Okay. So, let's speak about, some, a little bit about string. So, I show you that you can define a string in, uh, um, in two ways right now. Like this one and with, without double quote. So what happened here? Why is underlined of red? We, we know that I can create a, um, a string with a single in this way. So what's the problem here? It closes up because it considers a string from the first. Yes, it considers a string here and then all the rest is not a string anymore. So I, how can we overcome this problem. How can we overcome this problem? Yes, with a backslash that is called escape sequence or escape character. So we are escaping this and we are saying that this a real content of the string and is not the limitation of the string. It's not the element that start or ends the string. Another way to solve this problem is to use a double quote instead of single in this case. And we, however, we could have the same problem if we write something like um, he says, In this way, we have the same problem because we reuse two times the same symbol. And with the escape sequence, we again solve this. Similarly to comments, you can also have multi-line strings. And so you can type something like a long string equal to I am a long string, I span multiple lines, for example, like comments. 
in the same identical way. So if you need to write more than a string that is span more than one line, you can use the same formalism that uh, in the um, comments. Okay. Okay, so let's speak about the if statement instead. What the if statement does in any programming language? Compare? What, why are you using an if statement in any programming language or in natural language too? To make decision to yeah to, to make decision to propose to choose behind among alternatives so if something happens if something is true then do something else otherwise perform another type of operation so in Python um, if statement works in this way you type if and then you type the element to compare. So for example, we can define two uh, variables. One is people, that is 20, and the other is cats, that is 30, for example. And if we say if people is less than cats, um, let's print uh, I don't know. We are don't. Okay. So this is how an if statement work. You type the if keyword, then the comparison without parentheses, without anything, just the comparison. Then, in a new line, you have no brackets, like in other programming language. In another programming language, you will write something if, comparison, open bracket, some code, close bracket. Here, in Python, you will never use a bracket to specify a portion of code, like this. But Python use indentation. The convention say that you should indent every time by four spaces. So here, PyCharm do it for you, and it move four spaces on the right, one, two, three, four, and then start automatically writing the new sentence. We can also write another if. So you notice that I go back on the border, and uh, we can say, for example, uh, the opposite, if people more than cats print, uh, we are safe. So here we have two if statement, separate. So if we run this, since People is 20 and cuts is 30, we have the first um, statement that is executed. Right. But how these four lines are executed? And this is a question for you. So I am Python, I'm the interpreter. So I arrive here and I read people equal 20, then I read cats equal 30, and then it works. I just started the, the sequence. Then what happens? It 
any, as in any other programming language right now, probably, that you already know. Python, read. Another line, and what it does. What what is does here in line twenty nine? Thanks. And if this is case, prints. Then what happens? It stop. If it's uh, cats are more than people, it print this. And then it stop here or not? It, go further and read this other line and then since the statement is not verified in this time it skip this line and then it concludes the program because there is nothing else written here if we want instead but the, the, the problem here we can say the point here is that we have we let the uh, the interpreter check two times for the same quantity for the same evaluation so first of all, we check if cats are less than people and then vice versa. Instead, we would like that maybe if it prints this line, it will stop its execution. It's not continue because it's already satisfies its condition. So in Python, you do this with the elif keyword. So what's the difference as before? Is that if you... If you reach here and people is, ma is less than cats, it prints this line. And if it prints this line, it step from line 30 to line 33. It skip line 31, line 32. Otherwise, if this condition is false, it will proceed on line 31 and then probably execute also line 32. Obviously, there is a case not covered here, and this is the case in which they are equal. So, in every other case, and in this case is just one, people equal cats, we can print, um, we can decide, we cannot decide, for example. Again, notice that every time that I complete a statement, the, the, the body of a statement, the, the new line will start in the margin. So if is if a leaf and else are aligned and the prints are aligned four spaces on the right. Obviously, Python has a lot of other operator for comparison we have C minor and major it also has equal hmm? written as a double equal symbol and the not operator so we can for example print not false for example and not false is true, it's not false, perfect. And we have also obviously the other Boolean operator, like uh, just to take an example, uh, and or that works like um, <coughs> that works like according to boolean logic hmm? so if we, if we run this again we see that yes we still have too many cats and then it will print uh, not false and it prints true and then this expression is false and also the other expression is false, okay? So, 
let me open another file just to avoid writing everything here. So let's speak again about strings. So So you can imagine that strings are composed of Strings are composed of, the, in your imagination, charters. So if we want to print a single charter of a string, we can use the for loop, for example. So we can say for char in hello print char. So what this two lines of code does. It defines, first of all, a temporar, temporary variable that is called char that exists only in this loop. So it defines this char and it says for something that we call char. Inside this that happens to be a string, print every single element of this collection of elements. So in this case, we are expecting that it will print the first time the H, the second time the E, and so on. So let's try to see if it's, if it's true. So. You see, it prints the first time H, the second he, and so on. One charter per line. Print every charter. And right now, then let's try to define a string that I call the say hello. And I put in and assign hello to this variable. And I would like to print the second charter only. So I can write print d of say hello one. If I print, if I run this, it will print the second charter as expected. This is something that is clear for everybody, why I'm writing one and is printing the second charter, especially for people that doesn't know how to program, sorry. It prints, I use one, so this one is called an index, and I use one because most of the times we start counting from zero and not from one. So the, the first element has index zero, the second element has index one, and so on. So if I write here, for example, he zero, and I run this, I will print the H as expected, because we start counting, in this case, from zero. We can try. Like the for loop, not like char in hello, not char, not like the first line, but using a variable. You would like to write, some, let me, something like, uh, for uh, e, something like this. Yeah, this is, a this is uh, 
more or less. There is a way to do this thing in Python, and we, we, I will show you in a moment. The, there is not this way, this. This, this exact line does not exist in Python. You cannot write something like that. But there is um, a structure that allows you to do this thing that is counting up to a number from a number by stepping of one, two, three, or whatever you want as a step. And this, I can show you right now, say. Yes. just to, to avoid, uh, yeah. and this is called range for number in range so this count from zero to nine and print zero, one, two, three, four. And you can also use this version in which you start counting from zero up to 10 by step of two. So we'll print zero, two, four, it will skip the one, three numbers. So this is a function that is called the range and it builds a range of, in this case, number, and then loop on this range he built it. Okay, uh, let's go back for a moment to the strings and to the charter. Let me copy this here. And if I write print type of say hello one, what are what I expect to see? What is the type of this charter? Who say char? Ends up for char? or something like that, charter, or something like that. Uh, all the other would say nothing or something different. It's a string. There is no char in Python. Everything is a string. So a, a charter is in reality, a string. Hmm? Just a curiosity. Then you can combine a concatenate strings if you want. One way is doing, uh, um, for example, this. So let me define another language. Um, Another variable that they call language name, and they put it Python, and then version, and they write 3.6.4. Maybe it's a string. And uh, I can concatenate these two strings in this way. So I can create I concatenated two strings by saying that the first string plus the second string. So obviously here if language name is a number and version is a number, this operation will perform an addition. But in this case they are both string, so the result is The result is 
a new string that is com the combination of the other two without space because Python and 3.6.4 doesn't have any space. If I want to add a space, I could, for, for example, do this. So language name plus a space that is a string plus the version that is another string. So in this case, you know, in this case, I will have Python space 364. And you can also obviously put this directly, sorry, this directly inside the print if you want. You can also do something uh, um, nice, probably quite useless, but nice, that is uh, language name multiply three. What do you expect that it happens here? It repeats. It repeats the strings three times. Python, Python, Python. It multiplies the string for the number specified here, there. And you can also build more complex strings if you want. Like for example, a equal three and b equal two, five. And you can print um, So what do you think it happens here if I run this? It will print what? Three times five is eight. Maybe times with this way. But yes, it print this. And notice here that A, B, and this operation are not string. But it prints everything without giving any error. This structure only works with print. You cannot have a variable called whatever you want equal A, comma, times, comma, B, and so on. This gives you an error. So if you want to uh, concatenate uh, different types, strings with numbers and so on, you have to convert one in the other, probably the number in a string, uh, if you want to print it, in this way. So another variable that is It and so on. So this take the a variable and if it is a string it does nothing because it's already a string and if it is a number, a boolean, some type that Python know, it try to convert it in a string. So Python know how to convert a number in a string for sure so it will put the number 3 in a string format then it concatenates it with times, it is a string, and it performs the same operation with b. It takes the number 5 and converts it in a string. So if it's able to convert from one type to another, it will do it. If b or a is a string, it will do nothing because they are already a string. And if it's not possible to convert one in the other, it will give you an error. So obviously, 
Another difference between the, the, line, the previous line is that uh, print a comma times and so on will add a space between each element while the plus symbol will not. So you need to add manually uh, a space if you want. Then there are, so I can, for example, write here print of this. And if we run it, you see that it will print three times five. There are at least other two ways of uh, uh, building, we can say complex strings. And I will go on the slides for a moment. One is this, so you put uh, your, and uh, you want to print the results, obviously, you put your sentence here, so here we'll go three times five is 15, and these are, is, everything is a string, obviously, because we have the, the double quotes, and then you have this element here, and then we have a space and the percent sign, an open parenthesis, and three, the three variables that we want to print. How it works, this, this works, and how it works, it take this, the content of the first variable and put it in the first symbol, the content of the second variable in the second symbol, and the content, in this case, of the, the result of the operation in the third symbol. These symbols are called specifiers. And with D is a specifier for formatting numbers, integer or floating point numbers in strings. Then we have other two specifiers. One is the S specifier for inserting strings, if you want, if you need it. And the other is the row specifier that add here as a string the raw representation that basically for a string is a string with a single quote before and then the end of a string. So the element as Python see it. And these strange things here that start with an upper parenthesis and does three elements or multiple, in this case three elements, but basically it could have multiple elements, is called a tuple. And this, and this is a data structure that, like I said, typically is used in Python. It's a collection of elements with no specified order or meaning, just elements separated by a comma taken together. So this, const, this structure allows you to take the single element in the tuple and put it in the right, we can say, place inside the string. Another, then I will share with you on GitHub an example that play with all these three specifier so that you can see how they print on screen different things. And another format, another way to print element is this one. So instead of using specifier, you use couple of brackets. So you have in this case three couple of brackets, and then you have in the string, and then you have a point, and the format, let me call it function, the format function, let's say, that has in this case a three parameter, one for each couple of brackets. So as before, in this way, it will put the content of A in the first couple of brackets, the content of B in the second couple of brackets and the content of the multiplication in the third couple of brackets. So this is a, a new way, let's say a Python tree way to do string interpolation, building, printing and building complex strings that has 
the difference between, as with respect before, is that you here inside this bracket, in this case, you is similar to say zero, one, and two. You can put the element in which position you desire. So in this case, without writing anything, is like writing in the first case zero, in the second case one, and third case two. So that you put the first element in the first place, the second element in the second, and so on. But you can also Okay, you can also decide to, to write here one, to write here two, and to write here zero. So to move, to reorder this element, to print this element in any position you prefer. So again, Remain a string. Um, let's create uh, again the, let's copy from here the string say hello. And let's imagine that I write the string in this way. I make a mistake. I don't write hello, I write elko. We know that we can print for sure the fourth element in the string and see it as a charter. So in theory, I can also maybe change that single element without redefining the entire string in theory. So for example, I can write say hello of uh, one of three and say that this is an L. In theory, it should work. No? Yes? I can print the third element and print here on the, on the, in the end of the ID, the L letter. Yes, I can perform this operation. It, it doesn't give me any error here. I can do this operation or not, according to you. How many of you say yes? And how many of you say no? And all the others? No opinions. So the ones that uh, say no, one, because it's not possible to change an element of a, of a string because strings in Python are, co are said immutable. You cannot change an element of a string once it is created. So if I made a mistake, I can redefine in the code the entire string. I can replace the string. I cannot change one single charter of a string. Also because we see, we see before that, we saw before that charter are not existing in Python. So everything in a string is a string. So you cannot replace a charter because you don't have charter, you have only, only strings. Okay. Just a curiosity since some of you are speaking of their own stuff. Um, what happens? if I print this uh, variable. Yes. 
Someone say error. How many of you say error? Just one, two. And the other say something. What happens if I try to take true and add one? False. False. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Boolean are ended because we have only, only true and false. Uh, let's try. Um, sorry. Two. Because two is coded as one, and false is coded by zero as zero, so it, it converts true in a number and perform the addition. So this is something uh, that you will use a lot. Okay, so. So now, let's um, speak about how to get input from the user that is possibly interacting with your uh, application. So, for example, I would like to ask you, or a generic user that is using this, for example, I would like to, I would like to ask you your age. So, I will print uh, this line, how old are you on the screen? And then I create a variable that is called age. And uh, I can use this function that is called input. And then I can print uh, your age is uh, Right? So, input allow you to take uh, some piece of information from the person that is using your program. So, we expected that the program prints how old are you and then waits for your input and then it will print your age is uh, the number that you inserted. So, for example, if we run this, so you notice that it, stop, it stops at how old are you and it, it waits for something that I need to write and I need to write. How old are you? One of you. Do you know how old are you? No? So I suppose that you are around 22, 23 years old, right? 22 or 23? 21. Not too many. 21. So I insert 21, press enter, and the program resume its operation, and write your age is 21. So here we have to notice one thing. And the thing is that the result of the input function, so what you put inside this age variable, is a string. It's always a string. No matter how you type here. You can type a number, you can type a true or false, but the result is always a string. So here, from this moment on, age is a string. So if you want to perform uh, an addition between the age uh, and, uh, I don't know, something else, you cannot uh, perform this operation because age is a string. If you really need the result of input 
as a number, for example, you can use a similar function to the string function we saw before, that is int. So int of input perform the same operation as before, but takes the value you insert here in the console and convert it as a number. So that from this line on, age is a number, so you, you can perform any operation that you will perform on a number, but obviously you, you lose the possibility of performing any string or related operation because you convert it in a number. Okay. Another five. The name of the file is list uh, underscore dictionary because we will start speaking about list and dictionary. So right now we saw that there are some basic types in Python, integer number, floating point number, strings, um, booleans, and we saw that there is no charter. Uh, but Python has other two, we can say, default types, default structure, it's more correct, default structure, that are lists and strings and dictionaries. So list is a data type build, built inside Python that is able to store multiple element with the specificity of being this element in sequence. So it's an ordered collection of element. And you may notice that these elements could be of any type. You can have a list of strings, like in this first case, or a list of number, like in this other case, or a mixed list with some number, some strings, some boolean, you can put inside a list basically whatever you want. You don't have to say this is a list of string and we'll only accept string, but you can mix things up. So a list, a data type to store multiple elements in sequence, a dictionary, a data type to store again multiple element but not in sequence. So while a list has a first element, a second element, a third element, a fourth element, like the charter in a string, a dictionary is has no order, we can say, at all. But a dictionary is composed by two elements, a key that is the first element and must be a string that is immutable, like all the other strings, and a value that can change over time. So here we have a first dictionary that say that at the key hand, we have a value that is six, that are the hand has six legs. At the key snake, the value is zero because the snake has no legs, and the core has four legs. And similarly here, we can say that the key Italy as, as a code, the value IT, and Germany as a code, the DE symbol. And if you want access to any of these elements, you need to know at the end the specific key of the element you want to retrieve the value. So this is we can say the second element of the dictionary, but in reality, this is the element with key Germany. No matter if this is the second, the third, the 11, we don't know which or the order of the, the dictionary. So while here we'll access the list by number, 
the element number zero is apples, the element number one is orange, the element number three is pear, here the element number zero is one, and so on. Here we don't have an element number zero, an element number one. We have an element retrieved by the key Kent in the first case, and by the key uh, Germany in the second example. Uh, we saw the for loop, also the while loop exists and is written in this way. Uh, just uh, try avoid to, to put it in pie chart because it's nothing signif particularly significant. So you have to define a variable in the first line, in this case doctor equal to one, and then you have a while loop, so up to while doctor is minor or equal than 13, you can call this function by passing this variable, and then you increase doctor by one. And this works for 13 times. And we already saw this about charters. And also we saw this about range. So for number in range, range is the function as before that will build a list between zero and five and print every element of the list, or also this, that will build a range between zero and 25, but by moving five number times. So it will print zero, five, 10, 15, and 20. Notice that the last element, 25 in this case, and five in this case is not printed. So the first element is included and the second element is excluded. You can use uh, yes. You can use the for loop for um, printing and navigating both lists and dictionaries. So, for example, let's create uh, the list fruits as before. That has apples, oranges, and pears. So we can print every, we can print the list, print fruits, or we can print every single element of the list or access to every single element of the list by saying for fruit, that is again the tempor a temporary variable, for fruits in fruits, with, that is the list, as before, we can say print I love uh, uh, Freud. So it will print I love uh, apples, I love oranges, I love pears. We are expected that it will print this. Yes, maybe the right file. Okay. It prints every element of the list. And similarly, we can have the regs dictionary. The dictionary starts with the brackets. And we have the key hunt um, six, snake zero, and uh, go four. And we can print So if we try to print the dictionary in this way, it will give us we I would like to print uh, um, the, the snake has zero legs uh, the, the, uh, one time, and uh, the hunt has six legs, and the uh, co has four legs. I would like to print this element and combine, separate, we can say the key from the value. So I can say, I need to say for animal 
comma number, for example, so I am interested in having two variables, the name of the animal and the number of its legs in legs.items. These items is a method that for you that uh, if you don't know um, object-oriented programming, let's say that basically a method is really, really similar to function. So like print as before, these items takes the content of the dictionary, splitting key from values. So for the couple of variables, animals and number, for each item, for each couple of key and values, I would like to print, uh, I will use the new format um, as uh, legs dot format and I will put here animal number. So as before, the content of animal will go in the first couple of brackets and the content of number in the second couple of brackets. So if we run this, we will see as expected that hands are six legs, snake are zero, and the co as four. You can, as I said before, obviously print an entire list, like for example, print fruits, and you can also print, since the list is a sequence, of that uh, a sequence of elements, you can print the first element of a list like we printed the first element, the first charter of a string. So for example, if I print a fruit of a zero, I expected that it will print apples. So correctly it prints, in this case, apples. I can also modify a list so, for example, I can say that I would like to to change the content of the first element. Yes. Is there a way to um, avoid the new line in the string, like printing everything in the same line? It's a good question. Uh, the print. Function does should, shouldn't have this uh, should not have this function. Maybe there is a variation of print, but I'm not uh, aware of it. But I can check. Okay. And um, uh, fruit zero, for example, I would like to change. I, I don't maybe I don't like apples, so I can do this. Um, Okay, I would like to, to have in the first element another time oranges, because I really like oranges two times. And if I print again fruit of zero, I expected that it will work or not? Yes. This time, yes. So it prints apples in the first time and oranges in the second. And if I print the entire uh, list, obviously this time it will have oranges, oranges and pears. Because I for real replace the first element in the list. Another, you can also add elements for, to a list and there is uh, three different way to add elements in a list, and they will be the last thing that we'll see today. And uh, these three elements, these uh, methods to add uh, something in a list are append, extend, and the concatenation um, operator. So I would like to, for example, append uh, 
a new fruits in the list. So I will add the fruits in the end of the list. And we can print this. Or I can extend Um, yes, extend the list, so a difference, append, appends a single element to a list, while extend allow you to extend a list with an entire other list, so it merged two lists together, so for example I can say, I can create right now a list with a single element, and so it will extend my previous list with this new list that it happens to have a single element uh, again, or I can use the concatenation operator again plus and like before also the concatenation operator allow you to extend a list with another entire list. So these are three different ways to add something at the end of a list. The append method adds a single element to the end of the list the extend and the plus, so the concatenator operate, operator, the concatenation operator, um, allow you to add an entire list to an existing list. Okay, so we can, I think, stop here, and uh, on Monday, we will have the first lab on Python and that will cover some, something very simple, just something that we saw before. And then in the first hour at La Dispe, in the second hour we will move here to have the feedback of your proposal, I suppose. And on uh, Friday, on thur Thursday, next Thursday we will continue this uh, second part of this lecture. So, if you have any question, otherwise, have a good evening.